let me in. I want to come in. I want to be a part of your life. I want to be in your life. I want to you to take this yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. But I want our scripture reference coming from Revelation chapter 3. If you have your Bible, go to Revelation chapter 3. Starting at verse 20. For our teachings say Revelation 3, 20 through 22. Here Jesus is addressing, John is writing down the revelation of Christ. He's addressing the seven churches. But this letter to this one particular church, something he said to them at the end, caught my attention. I want to use the ending message that he warns and admonished the church at Laodicea. He said he was standing at the door knocking and that he wanted to come in because they had him on the outside. Like many people today, they got Jesus on the outside, but he wanted to come in. And he was telling them that you know you say you rich and that you don't have no need of anything and that you got it going on. He said, but really you broke, poor, and naked because you got me on the outside. And we got a lot of people, they living just for today. Amen. And they think that they got it going on. Yes. But you're going to need Jesus before you leave here. Oh, yes. And so he's telling the church at Lelda City, he said, he's knocking on the door. He said, if any man hear my voice and open up the door, he said, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. And not only does he come in and fellowship with you, this is the part that gives me, he said, I'm going to let you sit on the throne with me. Amen. Oh, see, we overlooked that. And he said, if any man have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, I'm telling it to them, but it's for you too. Because anything I write, I say, it's for all. I may be addressing a certain group or individual, but it's for all that would take heed. So let's look at Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. When you find it, say, bless his name. Bless his name. Let me in. That's what he's saying to us today. I want to come in to your heart. That's what I want to get in that heart. Because that heart governs everything. Yes. Revelation 3 20 reads, Behold, she's talking to the church at Leo Seal. Behold, the church that said they was rich. They don't have need of nothing. Yeah. They thought they had it going on in their own outside. Yeah. But he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will suck with him and he with me. To him that overcome it, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I overcame. And then sat down with my father in his throne. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. He said, if you have an ear, that's a spiritual ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I'm standing at the door knocking. And knocking indicates to me that he's trying to get your attention. No. When people knock on your door because they want you to respond. You're right. Right. It indicates they want access to the other side of that door. Right. But it also indicates a barrier or restriction. All right. I don't know nobody getting in their bed at night and leave the door open. You close your door and you lock your door because you don't want nobody coming in. Yes, sir. But Jesus is saying, let me in. I want to come in and be a part of your life. But many of us don't want him to come in. Because we don't want him to see what's behind the door. But I got bad news. He see anyway. Because his eyes behold the good and the evil. He see it anyway. But he's knocking at the door of your heart. 
You got to, I'm a gentleman. I'm going to stand here and knock until you open up. Yes. Now there's some knocks that are different than other knocks. For example, You know whoever knocking on your door like that, they know you and you know them. You're expecting them to come. Uh-huh. But there's a knock that's a sense of urgency. Uh-huh. Come on now. Uh-huh. That person needs some help. I need you to respond. Uh-huh. I need to hurt. And I think that's how Jesus is knocking. Uh-huh. Because the time is getting short. That's right. That's right. That's right. He said, let me in. Uh-huh. Jesus wants to be a part of your life. Not only that, he wants you to dwell with him in heaven and sit on his throne. Uh-huh. See, we, we think we're just going to go to heaven and just worship God. No, y'all going to sit on the throne with me. Uh-huh. That's what he's saying. Uh-huh. Right. And how do I know that's true? He must have been teaching his disciples that too. Mm-hmm. While he was on earth, he had to be. Because the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus and left the other ten disciples and said, Jesus, we want you to do something for us. And Jesus said, what is it that you want me to do for you? One translator said, a mama went to Jesus and said, give thee two, my two sons a place in your kingdom. One to sit on your right hand and one to sit on your left hand. Jesus yeah. said, woman, do you know what you're asking me? But Mark 10 said that the son, the brothers went them two brothers. Yeah. They both was preachers. They went to Jesus and said, can I sit on your right hand and can my other brother sit on your left hand? Jesus said, can, do you know what you're asking me? Can you drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? In other words, when it get rough, yeah. when they slap you yeah. and say, prophesy and tell them who hit you, when you nail you to the cross, can you go through all that for me? They said, we can, Lord. He said, can you be baptized with the baptism that I've been baptized with? They said, we can, Lord. He said, surely you will be. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. Oh, but you're going to sit up there with me, but I can't tell you who's going to be next to me. Right. That's the Father's decision. Right. But you will reign on the throne with me. Yes. You see what? See, people are missing out. Yes, they are. They're missing out. It's more than just going to heaven. Uh-huh. You're going to get to sit on the throne with him. That's what he's saying to the churches. He said, let him that had an ear hear what he is saying to the churches. What an honor does the master has in store for us and all those who place their faith in him. Not only does he save us from condemnation, judgment, and the lake of fire, which is the second death, he is willing to share his throne with us. He willing to share the throne with us? And it's proof that we're going to sit on the throne with them because them brothers was trying to get them a secure seat. And Jesus said, you, that's not mine again. Let's look at Mark chapter 10. Just to prove that we're going to sit on the throne. If we hang in there. Look to your neighbor and say, only if you hang in there. Only if you hang in there. There's one scripture that says, he that endure to the end shall be saved. You, got to, you can't quit. If you quit, you won't get your reward. Mark chapter 10, verse 35, when you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. Mark chapter 10, I just want to show you that we're going to sit on the throne. Because now Jesus had not died. He was still with his disciples. But he must have been teaching them this stuff. Because the brothers came to him and asked him for a place on the throne. And Jesus said, that's not mine to give. That's for the Father. One translator said, one chapter said that the mother came and asked him. The mother came and asked Jesus to give her sons a seat. Mark 10, 35, look what it says. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, what would ye that I do for you? They said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in glory. Not now, in glory. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said unto them, ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I shall drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all 
ye be baptized, but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it should be given to them whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. When the other ten found out what they was over there asking Jesus, they got mad. They said, come on, man, how y'all gonna do that? Go behind our back. And we all here serving. But now another chapter says that the mother came and Jesus told them that it's who the father prepared it for. That's not my decision, but you will sit on the right hand of me. It's not my decision. Yes. See, Jesus sit down on the right hand of the Father right now. Yes. But that's what God had him sit. Because he's our advocate. So when we mess up and God get ready to strike us, he hold God down and say, hold on, Father. That's one of mine. Right. He's our advocate in heaven. Right, right now, that's what he's doing. Right. Seated at the right hand of the Father till he come back again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So we see that it's more than just going to heaven. But he's knocking at the door of your heart. And that's what the battle is, the mind. Yes, I got to do a sermon. I got to go by, I told, told my co-worker the other day, I got to go by the, the party store and I want to find a plastic brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got to do a sermon with that brain. Because yes, that's what the battle is, in the mind. Yes, it is. Satan wants your mind because the mind governs the body. Yes. As a man think it's so oh, yes. easy. See, some people feel like they don't need God right now. When okay. Jesus studied, knock him at door of everybody. We see what's going on in the world. He's knocking at the door of heart. It's just like some people feel like they don't need to go to the doctor. I feel alright. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I ain't calling. But one day you might get something that a Tylenol can't fix. And you got to go see the doctor. Huh? One day you might get something that an Advil can't fix. And one day you're going to need Jesus. You may not need him now. But something going to happen in your life where you're going to have to look to the hills yeah. from which coming your hill. Because this thing going to be too big for you to handle. You're going to need God's intervention. And I might as well let them get involved while the land is peaceful than while there's trouble in the land. He's standing at the door knocking. I don't know who I'm talking to. I want to come in. I want you to open up that door and let me in, which is our title. Uh -huh. He's not gonna kick the door. Now Satan will kick that door down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Satan will come in if you leave a crack. Even if you leave a crack, Jesus not coming in. He said, I want you to open the door for me. That's that's right. Right. Now the thief, he ain't gonna do that. Hmm. You leave that door unlocked. If you leave that door cracked, that thief gonna come in there. That's what Satan does. Oh, he comes yeah, still right. kicking the straw. But Jesus is a gentleman. I want this to be by your permission that I come in. That's it. Then I can fully operate in your life because it's your permission. You allow me. Yes. Look to your neighbor and say, but there are a couple of things you got to do. There's a couple of things you got to do. The first thing you got to do is open up the door. That's it. You got to first let him in. That's it. And then he'll build from there. You develop a relationship right. with him. How does these now this is what the devil knows, but I want to give y'all this secret. How does Jesus knock at the door of your heart, literally? Okay. How does he knock at the door of your heart, literally? He utilizes his preachers uh -huh. to knock at that door, right. his evangelists, yeah. his Sunday school teachers, his pastors, his bishops, to proclaim the gospel to, to, to you so it can prick your heart through conviction. Uh -huh. And once it prick your heart through conviction and you have a godly sorrow, yes. only then can you open up that door and then we pour into you that word. And then you repent. And you call on the name of the Lord. And you be saved. That's it. He used the ministers. Yes, There's sir. no pricking or knocking going on if you ain't getting no gospel preached to you. That's right. He told his disciples, the works that I do, done, you, I, you shall do also. Mm -hmm. And greater. greater. He uses ministers. The ministers are his vessels to your soul by proclaiming the good news about the grace and salvation of God. Given to all those who would accept it. It's a free gift. Yes, it is. So he used the minister. But the first thing you got to do is open up that door and let him in. Yeah. Romans 10, 9 and 10. You don't have to turn there. It says, but if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall what? Be saved. That's it. You said it with your mouth. You believed it in your heart. And that's it. It's settled. 
Now all you gotta do is be baptized because he tell you to go publicly and be baptized. Don't be yeah. ashamed of me. <laughs> don't, don't deny me. Go all the way with it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because now if you say you believe and you really don't believe, because I can't see in your heart. That's right. And I baptize you. You just went down a dry devil <laughs> and came up a wet devil. That's right. <laughs> so what happened? Right. You went through a ceremony. Yeah. But nothing took place on the inside. inside. That's right. That's right. Hmm? So the first thing you got to do is open up that door and let him in. Right. And once you let him in, then he'll come in and fellowship with you. Right. You can tell him everything. Yeah. He ain't going to tell nobody. He ain't like your friends. <laughs> he ain't going to call nobody or tweet nobody. <laughs> you know, we, gotta, we, we tweet now. Uh -huh. We feel like tweeting. And you can tweet and sin. You still gossiping through technology. Don't be tweeting nobody's business. You gossiping. So you think God don't know about that tweet? Tweet. We ought to add that to the text. Tweeting is a sin if it's not your business. See, I'm I'm, I'm twenty years ahead of you. We sin with the phone all the time. You can see it with the cell phone. Or you think God can't keep up with technology? <laughs> you can say, but I ain't never said it, but you texted it. <laughs> if you don't think see, you can see it with your phone, curse somebody out with a text. And let them call the police. Threaten somebody through a text. Just threaten them through a text. And let them call the police and see if you won't go to jail. That's right. Oh. Come on, let me get back to Revelation. We don't want to talk about the tail phone. We don't want to talk about that. You sinning. All unrighteousness is sin. If it ain't right by God, it's sin. If God didn't approve it, it's wrong. Hmm? We getting ready to close. We got the close. Look to that. We got the close. We got the close. We got the close. Fight the good fight of faith. There's two things you got to do. First, you got to let him in. Yes. The second thing you got to do is fight for your faith. Because that devil will come test your faith. Fight the good fight of faith. And endure to the end. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't turn back. Don't faint. Don't stop serving. Don't stop trusting. Don't stop praying. And don't stop worshiping. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. All right, praise the Lord. Yeah. We will open up the floor.